case. Because if if I, if I miss something, y'all say just because I mean y'all know famously I have mm-hmm. ass connection and I'm ass mic, so like you know. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I got you. I'll be recording. Okay. Let me um. Let me get my headphones, bro. Never mind. Then I'm uh, All right. Yeah, you let me to scale first. Does my uh, is my mic good? Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, I think I'll scale first. And go ahead, bro. Okay. So, are you aware that Elaine Bellick was stated to be able to transcend um, and have superiority to physical spaces and abstractions? I mean, we can send it. I got you. Mm-hmm. And if you have the context for it, so the scan previous to it. So we can see in VC scans right here, and I'll elaborate on which specific part as well. So and here, do you know where VC scans is, is Demi? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So basically right here, we see the you know first panel opened up with a statement, I'm flying over purely physical spaces. And we see this illustration of her going across different dimensions and different states of being. As she states that, you know, humans and centaurs see me pass, I suppose wove me into their stories. The girl hauling a blanket of light across the sky. The gaps between worlds are rough going, at first cold and bleak and silent. They're nothing compared to the realms beneath, though Lucifer had never made an afterlife. Instead, a great pregnant emptiness pulses like a heart, claws at me with her invisible fingers. And then the second statement that we're deriving this off of is the statement that I fly on through abstractions and abominations, dimensions that are left incomplete with tiny flaws and grown monsters. So we can see another statement that's derivative directly and implying, or at least more implicative, that she's transcendent and superior over physical spaces. And another supporting scan to show this is the events that take place afterwards to where we see a depiction of Elaine Bellig flying through and on and above these physical ideas of space and whatnot to the point to where it's described as her going from all perpendicular directions without names, speeding, coming to nothing completely at all until we see the world around them fade around and avoid encapsulate them, which is the description of what they consider nothing. So I think from these examples and these, you know, properties of Elaine Bellick, we can infer and we can say that at the very least, from the description of how they're transcendent over the idea of nothing and how they fly over abstractions and physical spaces, that there's some superiority being directly implied and if not stated. Give your refutation. Oh, my bad. Sorry, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Um, You gave quite a lengthy explanation, and I don't really feel like attacking everything at once. So we can talk first and foremost about the flying over purely physical spaces. Um, Are you trying to say that based off this statement, because that's what you seem to have emphasized and screenshotted, are you saying that her flying over purely physical spaces affirms that she's above physical space? I think from the amount of evidence that I've given from narrative evidence all the way to the events following afterwards, that there's enough, you know, nuance from the scan itself to say that it is highly implicative and directly inferring a superiority over the spaces that she encounters, whether that's physical abstractionary or whatnot. That's okay, the logic I'm applying for all of these things. We we could, like I said before, we can get into the, the other evidences later. I'm just talking about the first scan and not even the first scan as a whole, but the first bit of the scan um in fact i'll make it clear i'm talking about where it says at first i'm flying over purely physical spaces humans and centaurs see me pass and i suppose with me into their stories the girl hauling a blanket of light across the sky the gaps between worlds are rough going at first cold and bleak careless and silent it's hard to keep track of time here that bit so i, th- I think this is distinct from the abstractions thing which we can get to later um the first thing i'll just ask you is if she's above physical spaces would that not affirm some form of immateriality I'd say that the way that she goes on and the way that they transcend is a lot different 
And I was actually thinking that you were going to say this. So I'm going to just send a scan for you. These are a few panels before explaining how exactly the process of them transcending and going into nothingness as demigods and has Elaine Bellic being the god of their verse. I'll explain how that works. I'll send a scans, you know, a bit shortly. These are the first few scans that I'm sending as you can look in VC scans. And then I'll send a few more for you. Yeah, so I have background noise, which is kind of why I didn't want to debate right now, bro. Um, what did you say? Like, what did these scans supposed to affirm? Mm, I'm getting more. I'll re-clarify afterwards. Is this is this going to answer my question of whether her flying above? Because clearly, you, like, you sent a lot no, of scans. No, it's not like going to. Before. I just sent them for the fun of it. Yeah, anyway, so like I was saying, you sent a bunch of scans, and I wanted to go scan by scan, segment by segment. And I understand you're trying to scale her above physical spaces by virtue of her flying above them. I'm asking you, do you not believe that her being above physical spaces or transcending physical spaces implies immateriality? That's physical space is just a dimension and her transcending dimension. Implies yeah, immateriality. yeah, no, I heard your initial claim, as I just said, which you clearly didn't hear. I'm getting scans for it and I'll respond when I need to. Mm. Okay, it's just a yes or no. Do you believe that her being above physical spaces affirms immateriality? I just answered you, but is let me it, get these Sammy, Can you tell me his answer, bro? Because I don't know why he's being so difficult. Did he say yes or no to my question? I'm sorry, what? What, what, uh, what was Archie's response to, answer to my question? Did he say yes or no? Hmm. Um, I mean, I, 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 I can't really interpret it for you. I mean, he... <laughs> like, he can think that what he said not, Debbie, read I'm Archie's not, mind for me. I'm not asking you to. Like, okay, well, I'm hold on, hold on, wait, wait. I'm saying, I'm saying, I can't necessarily interpret his response to you. I mean, like, where do? You, okay, so it's clear that there's a disconnect. So then, say, ask how this relates. Maybe, perhaps, if you're just not following it, or ask him to elaborate. Because I mean, like, if you're not following it, really, you gotta, you do have to ask him, and you always can ask him. I mean, it's not like, it's not like yeah, I'm, I'm just. just He's just yeah. going to sit here and say, no, fuck you. you're, you're no. Yeah, no, because you see, the issue, the issue I'm facing is, at this point, he sent one, two, three, four, five, six different scans. And I just want to see what these relate to. I was asking what they relate to and whether you could just answer my yes or no question, which you don't need scans to answer, which is there whether I sent being it. above. Okay, so now that you've sent all the scans you need, can you now answer my question with a yes or no? Does being above physical spaces entail immaterial existence yes or no um i think that's dependent uh on what i think it's dependent on exactly how you're transcending them right i think if you're transcending purely physical spaces maybe there's a some type of existential you know existential existence you have maybe there's some illogicality that your character has maybe your character doesn't necessarily abide by the same rules of, you know, real life to where a physical person can transcend a physical space. You know, there, there are many things within fiction and many ideas that can be proposed. Your question is very, very vague and very, very context dependent and, you know, situation dependent. So you're going to have to elaborate. Yeah. So what I'm asking, right, is because the, the context of the scan seems to imply that she's flying above these spaces and looking down over them. Now, from what I'm reading, right, she wouldn't actually be above or transcendent of them in the sense that she's in a, a above or a hierarchical like dimension in the sense that, I don't know, if I exist in the fifth dimension and someone else is in the sixth dimension, for example, that person that transcends me based on dimensionality, I don't think that's what they're referring to, at least in the specific segment I'm talking about, because the context of the scan says, humans and centaurs see me pass, and I suppose wove me into their stories, implying that she is perceptible, right? And, and she's not necessarily in a above plane or transcendental plane, at least at this point in time. And it also seems to say that it's hard to keep track of time here. And I believe that time is just a dimension of the progression of events that is unified with space. So if she's being affected by time, or she's perceiving time... Where is she being affected by time within this? When it says it's hard to keep track of time here, and she's like... Yeah, I know, I'm asking where is this out? Uh, in the very first scan, the segment I outlined to you. Of course. Good. 
yeah, so the fact that she's progressing because she's flying through these spaces and people can see her and she seems to be being affected by time because she has to keep track of it, right? She's saying that it's even hard to, this is a difficulty. A transcendental entity can perceive time as a dimension or as external to themselves. So it would not be difficult to perceive time, but she's clearly asserting some form of difficulty. So I think, at least in terms of the first segment, I don't think it's nearly enough evidence to see and prove that Elaine Bellick has the ability to transcend physical spaces, at least not in the sense that you're trying to get towards. <laughs> um, yeah, I just don't think you read my my skin, but I, I, I got you. So the entire reason why I sent these scans before is because I figured that that was the argument you were going to bring up. Within this first scan that we're seeing, how she's mentioning time, I think you're, I think you're looking at it from a strange angle. So basically... Elaine Bellick, she's new to her, you know, found abilities of, you know, her being, you know, a transcendental God, right? So she's, you know, she's not necessarily going to instantly understand a transcendental God. That's just the description I'm putting on it. But yeah, she's not necessarily going to understand every ability just yet because she's, her body that she's still having before she ditched her physical body and learned to let go, which we're seeing is happening within the scan and which is described the process. Um, she's not necessarily understanding at first that her body, she doesn't have to follow the, the rules of logic, you know, and we can see this being described within the scan below that I sent when she says, I have to gather speed gradually and my mind still, my mind is still bound to the laws my body has forgotten. So we can see her body is transcendental as far as your tangibility point these physical laws and these laws that are applied to her or were applied to her and are applied to normal human beings to where they have to operate, these are no longer being applied to her. And we can see within the previous one, Lucifer states that his wings flash as once as he's off into an unreachable distance. As we see, he's also covering this, this blanket of light, which is described within the first scan and he's being brought and he's, transforming into nothingness and going into nothingness to which he states to her you have to pace yourself and that to which she states that you know it doesn't come to me naturally which it does which is you know she obviously states by saying my mind is still bound to the laws my body's forgotten and we can also see previously above as you're still mentioning time yeah time is being mentioned because she's transcending over these these worlds some worlds have time some worlds don't and we can see if you can see in vc scans demi and see in this initial part she's still flying over this this physical space right she's still saying there's a world below me that i'm transcending and flying through and we can see this even more implied by the idea that she quite literally states dimensions incomplete so this is implicative that she's not necessarily saying that every single world and whatnot doesn't have time. That's why I'm not really sure what your time point is on. I mean, yeah, there's going to be some time in some worlds. You know, she it's not just a process to where she just snaps her fingers, right? Her mind is still learning and understanding and processing the fact that she's no longer human, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, I understand and, in the next point that you were mentioning about her, about her apparently, you know, like, well, what was even the next point? <laughs> I feel like that addressed everything you said. Um, the only thing I feel, feel like your explanation for well, this monologue mm -hmm. has yet to address is the perceptibility point. But if you think that's addressed, that I can just give my response. Oh, I mean, yeah, her perception is, and she literally explains it directly in the skin. Good. Okay. Yeah. So first and foremost, um, I suppose, based on my current knowledge, because I have yet to actually look at the later scans, like I said, I wanted to go scan by scan. I feel like if I tried to look at every single scan and try and make arguments for each individual one, I'll make less arguments of lesser quality. So I'm just going to go scan by scan. Um, in regards to her not understanding her abilities yet, I mean, like, I suppose it's fine based on... Wait, give me a second. Hi, Archie. Wait, give me a second. Hi. Or she should no toxic. Oh, he's, he's just not a wait, chill. He's not he's not really a, like I'll bring it in if I need to. Yeah, I'm like, I'm I don't think I need to right now. So Good. what I was saying was 
yeah, in regards to her not understanding her abilities, I suppose that's fine based on my current understanding. When I reread the scans, <coughs> I might change my opinion because I haven't actually looked at the later scans yet. But in regards to the body and mind point, which is in regards to just simply, oh, her mind is still constrained by these laws, but her body isn't, and she's she's still deciding whether she has to really follow these laws or not. Um, that would imply some form of transcendentality for her body, as in her body exists on or is ontologically transcendent of physical spaces, yet we see that that isn't the case because humans and centaurs are also able to perceive her, like she says them, like herself. They see me pass and wove me into their stories. So even if it is the case, and you might argue that she has yet to realise that her body has transcended these planes, her body does not possess the properties of, you know, transcendence because she can still be perceived. Um, in regards to the point you made about um, time is being mentioned as she transcending over these worlds, I think that's what's in question. I think that all is happening here is that Elaine Belloc is just travelling through dimensions. Not necessarily dimensions of, like, in a hierarchy, so certain dimensions being higher or lower than others, but more so in the sense that she's just going through and travelling through different worlds. Um, let me see. <laughs> what else did you say? I think you said some worlds have time, some worlds don't. Yeah, I think every world, at least in this first scan, maybe there's another world in the second scan they've sent that I'm not looking at, but in the first scan, all of these worlds seem to have time. So like I said before, time is just a progression of events. So time is progression, time is change. If it's saying that dimensions left incomplete and those where initially tiny floors have grown monstrous, forests of cancer blossoms, or oceans of shattered bone. <coughs> Damn. Yeah. Anyway, if you're saying that these things have grown, these things have blossomed, that implies progression because that means at one point they did not grow or they did not blossom. So that means that even in these abstract dimensions or abominations, time still exists. Um, and I think that that's contrary to my understanding of what time is because I think that time is a concept unified of space and physicality. So we may interpret abstraction in this context to mean, I don't know, non physical. I don't think that's necessarily what it means. I think abstractions and abominations um could have another meaning um perhaps like i don't want to say the word unique but um amalgam might work or might suffice let me see if you made any other points you said <laughs> oh yeah and for the for her being affected by time thing yeah the fact that she's flying and progressing seems to imply once again that her body is not actually transcendental physical space because like i said time seems to be a concept that's unified intrinsically of physical space but yeah you can go ahead and respond and if yeah, any of the points i made are mm -hmm. contingent on like later scans let me know so yeah that's fun so i don't think you really necessarily address much of what i said in the beginning you mentioned how time is the progression of events um you can think that you know what i mean that's not necessarily what i'm arguing here nor is that necessarily what i agree to um we can see how she's going through these dimensions you mentioned that because they see here that there's some type of <laughs> she's bound to them. I'm not really sure what you meant by that. When it says that they see her and she's woven into their existence, I think that's more of referential to the idea that when she goes from dimension to dimension, going slower and slowly, you know, more out there, which gradually just turns into an instant process has her going into nothing, which is, a, you know, is explained. It's, it, it seemed that it says the gaps between worlds are rough going. So, you know, when you were mentioning how, how they were almost like similar in that sense, no, they are different hierarchies of worlds. You know what I mean? Which is implied from this right here, which I'll send again. There are different hierarchies. And this is more implied with the fact that later on down the scan, they just completely enter into nothingness, which is what's seen. The void completely, void of time, space, and everything, right? This is implicative of some type of transcendence. Now, as I mentioned previously, you can try to, you know, apply whatever, you know, logic you want from the real world to this world. But that means two things, though. That means either A, she's illogical. And she's just simply transcending these ideas 
and these normative laws, which would be even more implied from the fact that she directly states, these are the laws my body's forgotten. <laughs> or that means, too, your definition and what you're thinking isn't necessarily applied, considering the fact that when it says that, that there is time and whatnot, this is in the midst of her going through, through these worlds, right? These are in the midst of her transcending and going higher and higher. So that state of quote unquote time being there, that can change really within any instance. The, the, the idea of time is never really elaborated upon. You know what I mean? And we see an even, an even more and a heavier example of this and an even more direct example of this from the fact that she's literally, or that Lucifer states, his wings reach and flash once, just once, instantaneous, and he's off into an unreachable distance. This is similar to what I was saying previously from our example and the way that it's illustrating these gaps between worlds and the abstractions. It can be viewed as if she's flying through and through because these are through the this is through the perception of her mind. But what could actually be happening is that he's just reaching again within an instant. These are things that are implicative and implied. Right. And your, your idea that that her mind is still bound. That's not what it said at all. It said, you know, or that her mind sorry, not bound. But you said that her mind is still, you know, trapped. It just said that her mind that her mind is bound to the laws that her body's forgotten, but that's changes, right? We see a gradual change from the scans that I've sent right here. If we see in the initial scan, we see right here, she asks, what is happening to me? And he mentions the Godhead. My advice, try wrath, try mercy, and try to find yourself somewhere between. He's explaining that that this this idea that she's still bound has to be forgotten. Because her body's already transcendent. And this is seen within the storyline where she states she goes back, goes back in time, transforms her enemy, and basically changes her into nothing. Right? It states that I changed nothing that was her, but I removed two things, the corrosive power and the memories of a life she now will not live. I find her mother left her to her own devices in the angel's tower in hell. I cut around her without touching her and paste her into Manhattan. So we see her changing the reality around and pasting her. She's understanding that she can really do whatever she wants. Nothing's applied to her. And we see an even furthermore statement to where she directly states, in my mercy, I look down on Christopher Rudd being dead already. He is unable to die again. This cannot happen. But I send him on an errand, raise him. And then he goes for it. And then we see him once again being implicative that it's some type of death because it states that Wait. sent to hell for the murder of a child, he rose to become hell's king, right? We, so, we, so we see multiple instances of her not being necessarily bound or, or in this confusion about what her body is able to do. She is now fully understanding and she's fully transcendent of it. That's why I'm saying, even in this moment to where she states, even though this is still supporting my point that her body is quite literally not bound, it's a direct statement, it's even more of an implicative statement that her mind isn't necessarily bound either. Right? That's mm. what we're deriving from this. Yeah, so, um, I understand to an extent, obviously you cited a lot of pieces of evidence, so... If I fail to respond to any of them, it's just because I might have forgot. And if that case, it would be charitable for you to just resend the evidences that I failed to respond to. Um, because like like I've been trying to iterate, I've been trying to go scan by scan. And within that last point, you mentioned like eight different scans. And I can't really check the scans and read what they're saying whilst you're talking, because then I'll fail to track. So You can read right now, bro. Um, okay, sure, bro. Give me a sec. I got cropped them at that point. If you want me to just crock, you know, specifically what I'm referring to from these final three scans that are full scans, I got you. You're just, laying down. You're for, laying down. Fuck something in the second. Yeah. Bomba Okay. Yeah. All right, yo, can y'all like, uh, uh, like yeah, I in the chat? Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So right here we see, this is the scan I want. This is the full-fledged scan. But for this one specifically, I'll just crop. Yeah. Specific. <laughs> If you could just crop like the things that you're referring to. Yeah, they're already. Yeah, they're already. Oh, yeah. So I'll just talk about 
yeah, yeah. So this scan is where she grabs a little baby and then carry her back through the stations of her life and pre-life. Um, I changed nothing. That was her, but I removed two things. The corrosive power and the memories of a life she won't now live. Um, I cut around her without touching her. Um, and in the, in my mercy, I took, or I looked down on Christopher Rudd, being dead already, is unable to die again. So Fenris's fire eats at his body without ever consuming him. Um, let's see. I see your sins before, both before your death and after. They are great, almost beyond measure. Uh, but you have purged them all wherever you once were, Christopher Rudd. You're truly innocent now, W. All right. I think I understand. So, just so I don't straw man you, is your point just the fact that um, Elaine Bellick truly does transcend her physical limitations or logic or whatever, and the evidence that you're presenting is her ability to now do pretty much whatever she wants, such as, you know, remove people's sins, um, pe take people's memories, and so forth, so on and so forth? My scan, or my point, is that she has superiority to physical spaces and abstractions. That's my point. Okay, so I'll respond then. So I think the first thing you did was saying that she's illogical and that uh, you used the point about laws that her body has forgotten in order to justify this. Um, obviously, whenever we're talking about logic, you have to like include a modal scope. So whether it's normal logic or whether it's metaphysics or whatever, we need to include some form of modal scope so we know what we're talking about or logical scope. So I don't necessarily think that when it says that laws her body has forgotten, they're referencing lo the laws of logic. I think that they're referencing normal logic, which is just the laws of physics and the laws of nature. And I think that this is supported contextually because the context is that I believe she's trying to move at a certain speed. And if, if I'm remembering the scan correctly, she's trying to get towards a certain, or go at a certain speed and she's try she has to pace herself still um, or gather speed gradually. So it's referring to the gathering of speed, which obviously speed is just energy and going faster and so it would make sense that she needs to get this speed gradually because if she automatically shoots to her max or top speed then it will just follow that her mind would be unable to keep up because her mind is so used to having her speed constrained by things such as friction and gravity and stuff like that so i think actually contextually the laws that she's forgotten would most likely be normal logic um as for the second thing which is that um, my definition for why I'm thinking there is time and whatnot. Uh, my definition of time and the most orthodox definition of time, A theory, is just the idea, or presentism is just the idea that time is a progression of events. So it's biconditional. If events progress, then time exists. And if time exists, then events progress. If you want to posit like an unorthodox definition of time that is used within this series, um, go ahead. If you want to posit B theory, go ahead. Like, think it changed anything too much um but yeah i think that time is definitely working throughout these dimensions and the contradiction that i'm trying to posit here is that if there is time in these dimensions these dimensions cannot truly be transcendental because well time is once again a physical concept is tied in with space um uh let me see what else you said um the unreachable distance thing i like context for it uh, I don't think they're using unreachable in like the absolute context of like yeah this this thing is like totally unreachable. It might be hyperbolic. Um, so I just like more context because I, I don't really know what they're referring to. Um, as for the baby thing, I don't necessarily think this affirms that she's above logic. I just think this is byproducts of her divinity. So now she has the ability to manipulate and transmute physical objects, um, change them through time, edit memories and stuff like that. I don't necessarily think this affirms her being transcendental. Same thing with her removing sins. I think it more so ties into a apotheosis because that's what Lucifer says to her. And apotheosis is just a process of becoming divine. So now that she's become divine, she has some form of power, right, over these things. But I don't think that implies transcendent or transcendence, which is the idea that she's categorically above. Um, but I think one kind of I've yet to address is the nothing thing. Um, I'll address that last, I think. But yeah, you can go ahead. I forgot to respond, let me know. Yeah, I don't really think you addressed much of what I said. The only point that I found interesting about what you said
terms of the progression of events. I mean, we were literally, you know, physically witnessing a person going back in time because you define time as the progression of events. So if someone is quite literally going back, even though I think that doesn't matter considering the fact that she goes into nothingness and also considering the fact that she's quite literally stated to be unbound and that she's flying over dimensions and physical spaces and whatnot and abstractions, but she's quite literally going back throughout time, regressing throughout time and changing time, copying and pasting and editing the world around her. So I'm not exactly sure, even if we were to allow your definition of if it to be the progression, I I wouldn't even really see that would like, see how that'd be like really a refutation. You can go. Did you say, give me a second? Okay. Uh, I regret. Oh, I want to go to conclusions after. This is taking a little bit. I, I didn't expect. Actually, this is actually. <laughs> I won't lie. This is going a lot more civil than I thought it would be. No, Kizzy, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it, it, bro, I think he just doesn't understand the fact that it's fiction. But fuck it, though. You know. And the idea that even if it's illogical, I mean, cool. But... It's nomological. Okay. That's what's happening. That's what, he, that's what she's Oh, it's nomological. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, my bad. I had, to, I had to do something. Can you just repeat your whole argument, please, bro? Because I, I told you in the middle. I had to it was something. only once, or it was only one thing. Your whole idea about time being the progression of events, I think even if we were to allow that, even though I think there are many things within many of the scans that I've sent that has contradicted it, if we're witnessing a character quite literally go back in time and regress throughout time, even though time is, quote unquote, the progression of events, obviously the they aren't following the linearity of time, right? We were seeing some type of thing being unbound. And even if we were to say that, you know, whatever, if she's even going back and forth, I mean, she can't go above and beyond. I mean, we're literally saying her transcend dimensions, purely physical spaces. And we're literally saying, and we literally like, we like verbatim, we saw her say, my my mind is still bound to the laws that my body has forgotten and then proceeds to go from a purely physical space to nothingness. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of factors that go into play. And even if, again, she's quote unquote not bound by this, I, I don't I don't think that would matter if there is some type of logical contradiction with the way her abilities or power work. All right. You know? Yeah, I'll, I'll just respond to that. So yeah. whilst I was listening to you talk, one thing I forgot to respond to was the gaps between worlds are rough going at first, cold and bleak, airless and silent. I think that's just simply referring to the interstice between each world. So obviously worlds aren't going to be connected. So there's going to be gaps in between them. And those gaps in between them is what she's referring to when it says that they're rough going. I don't think this necessarily means that she's traveling through transcendental yeah. worlds in like a hierarchy. Yeah. I just think that she's traveling it's through 1500. worlds or separate dimensions. Um, yeah, another something... was... oh. Hello? No, go ahead. I mean it again. Yeah, anyways. Another thing you said was that she states to be unbound. Um, maybe I missed it. Can you just send me that? I don't know what you're referring to when you say that. Her going back through time doesn't necessarily affirm that she's above physical spaces because dimensions, at least on the verses by wiki or string theory or any mathematical theory of dimensions are not stopped by just time, right? Even if you want to see time as a dimension, there are other dimensions beyond the fifth dimension, beyond the sixth dimension that she can still be bound by. So just because she can travel through time does not affirm that she's above physical spaces um, or whatnot. And time can also be understood backwards. I don't see issue if that's what C theory is, I believe, where you don't necessarily have to understand time in a forwards or backwards t- um, time period or way. Um, let me see. Um, the laws that 
of this forgotten, I think I contextually link that to like nomologic, not necessarily the laws of logic or classical logic, because she's referring to gaining speed, which her mind might be unused to, and her mind might not be um, capable of handling, despite her body being capable of handling it. So now that her body is unconstrained by nomologic, she can just shoot from zero speed to like, I don't know, whatever speed that she's traveling at, whereas before, it would be necessarily gradual because of things such as friction and acceleration. So I think contextually it would be linked to nomologic. Um, I also looked at like the apotheosis thing and definitionally what apotheosis is, is to become divine. So I think that an explanation for her abilities to like purge sins and, you know, interact with souls and the afterlife in that sense could just be attributed to a divine nature, not necessarily a transcendental nature, um, at least above physical spaces. And I'm not sure if you forgot, but I put what abstractions mean on the question, because if we're understanding the word abstraction in like a platonic sense or an immaterial sense, abstractions typically are immutable, meaning that they don't change. If you're saying that the abstraction is well, if, if I do change and they grow, they blossom, because, I mean, you're that no they have physical forms, has... just cancers and tumors and trees and seas and stuff along those lines, then I just simply put into the question whether abstract is being used in a philosophical sense or rather an artistic sense, which abstract and art simply just refers to um ideas rather than um like actual physical things but not necessarily transcendental things if that makes sense um and for the nothing thing let me actually read the scan because i don't really know what it says but no there are two more from perpendicular directions without names they speed towards me but slowing slowing as they come so that when they touch there is no jolt no shock nothing at all the void opens around us Dhamma and Mazakin are completely spent and even Lucifer seems drained, but I am filled with a with a terrible energy. Um when it says void, let me actually search up what the definition of void is. Give me a sec. Um completely empty, completely empty space. To, to be honest, I, I don't um, even I don't even think that's necessary. Um Unless yeah, you have a, a further more point you want to establish after this, I, I don't really think any of this it really addresses anything. Or at uh, least I don't think that's my what my point is. Let me see. The void opens up around us. Um, I, does this void necessarily have to entail like true nothingness? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why? You know what I mean when I say true nothingness, Archie? Like when I say you true nothingness. That, I mean, <laughs> The absence yeah. of properties. Why yeah. can't the void just be like an empty set in which the set still exists, Max. but there's nothing Max. within the set? You don't know what. An em- Anyways, if you don't want to contend that, that's fine. Um, is there anything I missed? Um, I think we can go to conclusions, bro. Uh, actually, I want to ask you one more question. What would it mean yeah. under your definition of abstract to transcend an abstraction? What do you mean by transcend? Pardon. What, what, what would it mean? By transcend, to... I mean show superiority. Now, there's many ways to transcend something. I think if, for example, um, if I'm... What? Hero, shut the fuck up. Listen, basically, if, if there is, you know, for example, if I'm a basketball player, let's say, I don't know. I'm like, okay, I'm in my rookie year, right? My rookie year, it's okay. It's cool. But then six years later, I'm MVP, boom, boom, all-star, et cetera, et cetera. I think I have transcended a certain level of skill and showed superiority to my previous self. And that can yes. be applied to many things, and that can be upscaled, but that's an idea of what I mean, just yeah, showing superiority. I, I understand. If that's what you mean by transcendence, like superiority, um, as long as it's not... That's what I said in the beginning, right. Yeah, as long, yeah, but my entire thing is I want to make a distinction between that transcendence and ontological transcendence. And I, I don't necessarily think that they need to I, I honestly don't really think it matters, but um, we can go to conclusions. Yeah, let me just see. Yeah, uh, yeah we can conclude, I think. Yep. I don't think I have to respond to anything else. Cool. <laughs> you can go first, bro. Uh, yeah, so in conclusion, Archie sent these scans, a multitude of scans in which he tried to say that Elaine Belloc, and I quote, transcends both purely physical spaces and abstractions. <coughs> so I looked at the scans and I see that, well, first and foremost, you know, 
It seems that Elaine Bellet can be perceived by the humans when she's flying. If you're trying to affirm that, you know, Elaine Bellet has like transcendental ontology, so her very substance is above that of physical spaces, I don't see how the humans would not only be able to perceive and track her, but also like write and wove her into the stories. So that was already one issue. And the fact that she seems to like progress and change through time seems to imply being within time. Um, also that it's hard to keep track of time here, whereas an ontologically transcendent being would be able to just perceive time as a dimension or something external um, to them. He then went on to try and substantiate that by using uh, the gaps between the worlds are rough. And I just said that can just refer to the distance between each world. It doesn't have to refer to a hierarchy, but more so just different worlds um, that don't have to be superior or inferior to each other. He then tried to talk about, I fly on through abstractions and abominations. And I said that abstractions under a platonic sense or any philosophical sense really don't change. They're considered to be immutable. Um, and so the fact that these abstractions seem to change and grow and blossom seems to imply that they're not abstractions in the philosophical sense, but maybe in the artistic sense. So artistically, they are like referring to ideas, not necessarily purely physical things, but not necessarily transcendent either. Um, he then brought up something in regards to um, Lucifer going towards an unreachable distance and whatnot, and I asked him for more context and he didn't provide it. Um, he brought up her having to gather speed gradually because of the laws that her body has forgotten. And I basically just established that if this is supposed to affirm that her body is no longer limited by purely physical spaces, then it would imply that her body is transcendent of these things. Yeah, once again, in the prior scan, we see the humans perceive her, so that can't be the case. And furthermore, I made a claim that is referring to nomologic contextually, so I think I defeated that scan. He then sent a scan in reference to apotheosis, where Lucifer says, what's happening to me, apotheosis, godhead, um, etc., etc. The definition of apotheosis is simply to become divine. So the abilities that she sends, or he sends, that are supposed to like affirm her ability to just do anything, are closely related to divine principles. So taking away people's sins and having some form of superiority over humans. Um, but that does not necessarily affirm, once again, that she's transcendent in the sense that she's like an out-of-versal being. Um, when he sent the void thing, as in the, the, the void opens around us, right? Obviously, I asked him, do you think this is referring to true nothing, as in the absence of all properties? And he didn't respond, he just laughed. What I was getting at was that, how can they be within a void? And yet, if it's true nothing, then obviously this void would not contain any properties, but it contains these people, so it can't be true nothing. So instead, I just said that the void is just an empty set in which, you know, there's this thing that exists, but there's nothing within this thing. Um, but the things that exist, I don't think it necessarily affirms transcendence either. Um, he said some things about time, like she can travel backwards through time. And I said, you can be traveling through and back through time. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're transcendent. Essentially, my contention was just to prove that this character wasn't transcendent, which I think I did. Yo, Archie, you there? He died. Okay, while we wait, we're gonna watch some Hello Kitty. No, Jesus okay. Christ, no. Yeah, um... right. yeah, the case is like 500 pounds. Okay, Abby. All right, cool, I'm back. My bad. Um, oh, so you're gonna conclude, or do you want them to just give a question? <clears throat> no, I'll conclude. So basically, to address like all of the points and whatnot that happened. Why are people sending scans, bro? I'm finna time them out. Holy fuck. They're not even in the V. Okay, bro. They're probably um, happening. Basically, we see, we see right here, you know, up previously above, I'm representing that my character is superior to physical spaces and abstractions. So the first implication of this that I've demonstrated is it's saying, first, I'm flying over purely physical spaces. Humans and centaurs see me pass as I wove 
me into the stories. Now, with this initial statement right here, she had a few contradictions and a few refutations. The One of the most prominent ones he had with this statement in itself is that if they're seeing her, then, well, how at all would this, would this be some type of form of transcendence? So I elaborated and I explained that from this, and I sent the scan, when it states gaps between worlds are rough going and she's going through, and it also states she hauls a blanket of light across the sky, this is implying that it's not that all things all once or at once can see here. She's fl slowly transcending because her mind is still learning within this specific instance in itself. Oh shit, I'm transcending upon all of this, right? It states that, you know, her mind is still bound to the, to the laws that her body has forgotten. So with this initial statement right here, she's gradually flying through. Rather than just being there, she's just gradually doing it. And we can see this is still within the earth and humanly realm. I mean, we can see, and this is what I mentioned beforehand, you know, obviously there's still going to be time and stuff within these realms, right? They're going to see here, and as it states that she woves me into their stories, this is her going through each individual story and each individual dimension flying through, as I've mentioned. I also mentioned later down the line, going into the second point that we addressed, that they're nothing compared to the realms beneath through Lucifer's maiden afterlife. A great pregnant emptiness pulses through her heart and claws at me with her invisible fingers. And from there on, I fly on through abstractions and abominations. Dimensions left incomplete, as though they were initially planned to have grown monstrosities. I've mentioned this as an implication that she shows some superiority, not even some, that she does show superiority through abstractions and abominations. And I give supporting evidence by this by stating even afterwards of this being the case, it states from perpendicular directions without names, they speed toward me and slowing, slowing as they come so that when we touch, there is no jewel, no shock, nothing at all. The void around us opens around us. And we see this state to where they are surrounded by completely nothing. They are within nothing and they have become transcendent over as it stated before in the scan, purely physical spaces and abstractions. From this on, this is supporting evidence that they are in fact directly, you know, attacking and pointing towards this. One of C's main and prominent refutations to the abstraction point was stating, what do we mean by abstraction? Because of course there are different definitions for abstractions. So for this I offered, even if we were to entertain that for whatever reason they were referring to some whack definition and colloquial definition of an of abstraction, we're still seeing her transcend into nothingness. So that means she's still having to transcend the, these abstractionary, you know, ideas. And, you know, in some way, shape or form, she is still showing superiority to these physical spaces and abstractions. Now, next on, I gave even more supporting evidence by stating Lucifer himself states that it can be done. You know the rules where we're already headed. I'll see you there. And she states, wait, I have not, you know, never been there. Not from that moment that you pulled me out of someone else's death. And he states, pace yourself, understanding that she's new. And it even states his wings once flash off and he's off into an unreachable distance, carrying the same blanket of light that it states. It does not come naturally to me. And it states that I have to gather speed gradually and my mind still bound by the laws my body has forgotten. From this supporting evidence, I've stated to see that we can see quite clearly right here. Her body is 100% not bound to anything, right? We're saying that, that she's just completely transcendent, but she doesn't properly understand that. It's so much to conceptualize. She doesn't even understand she's a god yet, completely transcendent. And he asks for evidence, reasonably, of course. So I give a list of things that could be the case. I give this skin right here to where it states, Lucifer, what's happening to me? A terrible purpose. He states a godhead. And my advice, try wrath, try mercy, try somewhere to find yourself in between. Inferring and implying the status of a god that she's above everything. And from the skin on, to which C didn't understand, when I sent the scan of her copying and pasting and things, he assumed that I was referring to logic. I was merely referring to, as I stated beforehand, multiple instances 
of her following Lucifer's advice and becoming completely transcendent and understanding that she's above everything. It states right here, I find her, left her to her own devices in hell. I cut around her without touching her and faster pasted her into Manhattan to where she was never born. We also see another thing to where it directly states in my mercy, right after the scan, after she resurrects a man who cannot be resurrected. Once he's died, he has, will never die. She changed this within her mercy. This is more evidence and implicative evidence of what it's directly staying directly, you know, you know, in reference to what Lucifer said or Lucifer said, my bad, about her changing, you know, her mind and her mind completely forgetting the laws that she was bound by. Now, another thing that he mentioned right after that was time, right? He mentioned how time is the progression of, of you know, events and whatnot and how within these ideas even if you know we were to regress that she's still within time as i've mentioned to him he mentioned a progression so that alone is contradicted by the fact that she was able to go back but the problem is even if she was quote unquote supposed to be bound by time not only do we have a direct statement that states that she's not bound by anything right that my mind has forgotten the laws that my body or, or my mind has is still bound to the laws that my body has forgotten but we also see an example of her quite literally flying outside of these dimensions to where time is supposed to be bound and her flying into nothingness so this alone would prove that even if we were to engage and entertain his definition it still wouldn't matter because she's within nothing right we're seeing some type of some type of existence that's beyond that and another thing he mentions directly, and this is the last thing he mentions, he mentions the void and he says that it could just be some type of set to where no sets exist within it. Well, it quite literally states nothing at all, the void opens around us. So I mentioned to him, even if we were to entertain your definition, that there is absolutely nothing there except for the exterior set, not only can this not be proven, but also directly states nothing at all. So even if we were to assume that by this, it, it just means some set around, we have a direct statement in comparison to, to what could be happening. It, it doesn't really mean much within the light of this direct statement. That's why I'm saying even if we were to entertain this, it still wouldn't really matter. But that was a lengthy conclusion, but that's, that's my idea on why one. All right, let me try to give judgment, bro. See, who is your character? Uh, Confento. Yeah, exactly. You can scale him. Can, can, can I judge him? <laughs> or can you give judgment? Huh? Hold on. So, wait. <laughs> that's just the first thing I wanted to say. So, you understand that at best, in a versus battle, this is a stalemate. This is best case scenario for you. Uh, is this a judgment that you're giving or just just hear me out all right okay. heart to heart with you. you you understand that right best case scenario given what you didn't do is a stalemate right given the fact that i didn't scale my character sure and i'm gonna be honest you uh you agreed to several things, which would entail some level of scaling for his character. So, you know, you just kind of lost. I'm, I'm yeah, sorry, did I, man. Yeah, did I fulfill my position, which is that he has no ontological transcendence? Hold on, that doesn't, hold on. Even if that's the case, even if that is the case, that doesn't matter. You gave no, some, you agreed to, hold on. You oh agreed to several statements, which do entail a level of scaling for this character. Yes, Demi, I understand that. I'm saying my position hold on, is wait, wait, wait. So hold on, so if you understand that, that hold on, wait, 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 hold on, hear me out. So if you understand that, and you agree that you gave no scaling for your character, and uh -huh. you also agree that at best, there is a stalemate for you, um, uh -huh. I didn't explain this, but the best case scenario would be you debunk any bit of potential scaling for the character whatsoever. You didn't do that. So, Demi, Demi, this is why I wanted to finish. So obviously I understand that I agree to certain aspects of his character. My entire thing was, 
he opened up by saying his character is transcendent of physical and abstractions. I'm asking, did he substantiate this? But so that's his scale. Yes. And so even if you went on that point, it doesn't matter because you yourself agreed to several other points which do give him scaling. So no, oh that is so did okay, if I'm understanding this correctly, you're saying that because he has scaling, I have to scale my character now, which I understand. You have scaling and you have none. Y'all already yeah. included. So I'm saying was, did he scale? Yeah, what well, I'm saying is is his scaling. Yeah, okay, hold on, no. no, hold on. Even hold on. Even if you debunk his claims, but in the midst of doing that, you grant other claims which do result in scaling for that character. You have a just to put it in Dragon Ball terms, a power level of five versus a power level of like nothing. So like you you lose. It's it's a fight. Yes, but, I understand. Then you are asking. Did he you why you lost. Did, no, I have yet to scale my character. I'm going to scale. I'm asking you. No, where does this, oh my god! Let me, can I finish? Can I finish, please? I don't want to be cut. No, no, you asked for my judgment. I'm giving my judgment on the debate. You lost. No, I was wanted to judge on the point. That's why we concluded. That's, on the I point. didn't even ask. But you're not the one who asked that. I'm the one who asked. I said I want to go to conclusions. I think I won. Blatantly. Wait, no, 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 no. You said you'd scale first. Yes. No, no, no. We can go to Red because this is bullshit, bro. You said you scale first. You can go to recording. Yeah, you okay, sound okay, moronic. Okay. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. It's not because you can hear, bro. So I'm not, I'm no, not about to talk about that shit. What he said was, I'll scale first. If we go to Red and it says, I'll scale first, okay, then the I win thing can be contextualized to this point or his scaling. So no. That's how to scale. Oh, yes. You were, you meant to scale. You were supposed to scale. The problem no, is you no, didn't. No. No, 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 no. When you said you're going to conclude, I thought you were going to conclude on your scaling, yeah, not so then, everything. So then, this is, so then, okay, I don't know about you, but I've never heard people just like, a, just like conclude a fucking point. What like, I've, fuck? I've never, I've never heard people just like conclude a fucking point. Like that happened in the calm years ago, and then we stopped that because everyone agreed it was kind of fucking autistic, and so Are like we just stopped doing that. Like, no, what do you mean? He said it's retarded because you're, you're, you're supposed to scale. Arch supposed to scale, and then oh goes conclusions. And that's the only anyways, point. You fucking anyways, retard. Anyways, and then you agree to go to conclusions, and so it's not an unreasonable point. Oh my god, bro, this is good. Yeah, so not. Oh my. I'm still talking, and then you're trying to interrupt me and asking, and then acting like I'm doing something bad. Stop talking. Yeah, that's true. So, hold on. So I'm just going to turn this down. You're not going to get any headway. I'm going to turn my phone down, and I'm not going to hear anything that you're going to say until I'm done ranting. Is that what you want? Because I don't want to do that. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. Y'all lost on that. If you want to redebate the topic and give some actual scaling for it, sure, that's fine. But dog, you you quite literally agreed to go to conclusions. It is not unreasonable for me to assume this, especially considering most of the debates that I've seen over the years in this community. But then in addition to that, the debates I've seen with Archie, I've never seen this dude just conclude a single point. Maybe he has, and I just haven't fucking seen it, but I've never seen it. Yeah, so can I, I, can I, I've never even seen you debate or do any of this. So, yeah, so like, can I, you agree to go to conclusions, dog. Yeah, I know, I know, I know that's the claim. So, anyways, wallahi, 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 if you check the recording, the very first thing he says is, I'll scale first. You know what the word first means? It means that I'll be the first one to scale, and then you can scale afterwards. That's when he says, I'll conclude, I think I won. Okay. I'm not contextualizing that. See, she no, understand no, the problem with that. See, he said you. No, 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 See, he said he will scale, and then you scale. You're trying to conclude on the debate. I just said I won. Can we conclude? You agreed to go to conclusions. Are you fucking retarded? You're supposed to scale after he finished. Yeah. Also, the, the, here the, the problem is, and this is what I was saying. Maybe because maybe you just didn't understand what I meant when I said conclusions. Yeah, Dude, I'm telling you. In the beginning, you said, "Calm down, keep this up, interrupting." Because I've been, because I've been granting you, I've been, you, I've been granting you, you know, respect this entire debate. I think you have no problem granting me respect right now because I've been respecting your wishes and continue. Now listen, I'm trying to say because you've been talking for a very long while. See, and I'm just trying to clarify on something. So, so can we talk? Oh my God, right? go ahead, bro. Okay, so I'm saying in the big what. Okay, no, I was saying, um, no, he, uh, he fucking, he was trying to say something. That's what I was saying, because he did get cut off by mentality. 
So, yes. Yeah, so what just, I was trying to say I was, was saying, anyways, yeah. what I was trying to say was this nigga at the start of the debate. This is a textbook ambiguity fallacy. So this nigga at the start of the debate said, <laughs> anyways, yeah, I was I was gonna <laughs> <laughs> uh, the debate. Anyways, the nigga, the start of the debate says, I'll scale first. That obviously implies, and anyone that is, you know, linguistically co- and linguistically um, adept can agree that that implies that I'll scale first and then you can scale afterwards. That's what I believe he was implying. Then he said, We can conclude, I think I won. Okay. So I thought, hmm, he's talking about concluding on this specific point and this specific scaling, not the whole debate. I'm an inverse debater. If you watch any of my debates, you know this is how inverse debates usually go. So I think what you guys are trying to do, especially Demi, is you're trying to say, Well, he said, I'm going to conclude. So clearly, that means that you knew he was concluding on the whole debate. That's an ambiguity fallacy. The words, I'm going to conclude, does not necessarily mean you're concluding on the whole debate. So can I scale my character? What the fuck is this? Okay, right. okay. Hold on, hold on. Wait, before before you before you go on. So again, you it it seems as though you just didn't listen to anything that I said, and you were just waiting for me to stop talking so that you could finish your spiel. Um, all of what you just said was addressed by what I said. Uh, would you like for me to repeat it to you? Demi, I'm going to be honest, bro. Maybe because no, 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 what I have from what I have then you can't get mad whenever someone holds you to a yes or no question. It's a yes or yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I said yes. You can repeat it. All I heard from okay. you. Okay, are... hold on. Wait, wait. So, so then I'm gonna so hold on. So I'm gonna repeat it then. Okay. So I mean, uh, ahead, bro. hold on. Wait, wait. So a never seen you debate. B I've been in this community for years. I've listened to tons of inverse debates. I've done tons of inverse debates. I don't know if you guys know this, but I've done more inverse debates and crossverse debates more than I have any other fucking topic just because like i only recently started like really going into irl servers just like talking about and by recently i mean in terms of the time that i've been here like a quarter of the time i've been in the community for like four and a half years so like the past year i've been doing that so it is not unreasonable to think that but then also you're trying to say it doesn't necessarily mean that i also said it is the most probable given all of the experiences that i've had in this community over years if you meant something different then look at that point if i if i wanted to conclude on a point i'd just be like okay all right we're, we'll conclude on this and then i'll give you my scaling like because i've heard people try to um whenever i argued with them just be like okay well i think we've really gone into this do you just want to like just like just move on from this like and then we usually just move on from it i've never i never usually see conclusions i have seen like hundreds of these debates and been in hundreds of these like never once and so just saying it necessarily doesn't mean that doesn't mean anything to me because okay. the whole thing isn't about that i'm saying this is definitely a very reasonable interpretation just based off of how people said it it sounds like to me you got baited into concluding before you even gave any scaling for your character and then you were trying really hard to try to do some semantic like linguistic backflips to justify why that's not necessarily the case what? and i can see how you may interpret that but you have to understand you're not the relevant audience here if you don't communicate that properly that's on you you got baited into that you lost are you done buddy yeah are you done sorry can i respond now? listen okay. listen i was gonna say something this is also what you, like, I've been trying to say this entire time, see, in the beginning, and, and for some reason, you're not fucking processing through this, through your head. What did you say in the beginning, see? Because you're about to make me pissed. What did you say in the beginning? Because you've been saying this way too many times. What did you say in the beginning? What? What did you say? I'm not giving you a second. What did you say? What did you say? Okay. I'll answer. He said... Was that I'll scale after you scale. Okay. Right? Well, I, now I scaled. Right. Yes or no? Anyway, yes or no? Was, I didn't Did hear you. Scale? Yes or no, see? See, you're not going to do this with me because you're making me mad already. Yes or no, see? Yes or no? See? Yes or no? I had to restart my Discord. See? Yes or no? I scaled first. You are yes, me. You, yes, you scaled first. Perfect. What did I say after I got done scaling? I think I won. Let's conclude. Cool. Did I say I think I won the point? No. Did I think I say I won the sub point? No. Did I say I think that I won the micro little bitty point? No. Did I say I won a point at all? No. I said I won the debate. Yes or no? No. Bitch, ass nigga. No. 
You're right, right, right. So what can we imply? What can we imply from this? If I just based said I think the, I won. Based on the previous statement. I just won. No, no. I if I say I think I won, what does that mean? That you mean you won the point. What does That's that mean? If I say I think I won. And even then. In basketball, if I say I win, does that mean I think I win the first quarter? Statement I won. Does that mean I win the fourth quarter? What about the third? Second? Does that mean we're going into overtime, see? I'll see, like, what, what do you think that no, means when I say that, that genuinely? It's like directly entertaining and ambiguity. Because you're just being a rat. You're trying, like, what are you even doing at this point? Like, like see, I'm trying to reason with you because you're, you're making me mad, not even from what you're saying, but the fact that we were having such a good faith debate and so, somehow you're still back to this. Yeah, you're so still you, back to I'm, this. I'm trying to ask what you are you question, doing? Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Because okay, I, I don't yeah. understand why you feel the need to act like this towards okay, me. Okay, okay. Do you think Sasuke is stronger than Itachi. Get, a, no. get away from me. Do you think Sasuke is stronger than Itachi? Mm -hmm. Okay, most mm -hmm. people would say yes, right? If I then tried to say, okay, you agree Sasuke is stronger than Itachi, so that means tuning exam This Sasuke guy's is ridiculous, bro. Clearly, that's me taking advantage hey, of Hey, man, see, it's, it's okay, bro. bro. See, it's okay, bro. I <laughs> Bro, see, relax. It's like, hey, Holly, that's what I'm asking. See, bro. Like, yeah. are you serious? See, bro. Yeah. Just accept it. Just accept it. Just accept it. See, bro. You got baited, bro. Oh, bro. Man, you suck, 